we have the second generation seal which faces in towards the motor on the right we have the third generation seal this is the side you should see facing out you'll notice there's an arrow indicating rotation and you'll also see the record grooves in the center this is the third generation Teflon seal and it's correctly installed. Notice that the seal should be flush with this side of the case, not the back side, and that you'll see the arrow indicating rotation. The important thing here though is the case should really be put on then the seal. Okay, I had a mistake where the seal leaked. I turned it around like this because it seemed to make sense, but this is the wrong way to put it on. And if you do this, it'll leak you have an option. You can order from Max BMW Online the first generation seal which is rubber and is easier to install. Remember the arrow that you see rotating is always facing out and the smooth side always faces into the engine. I carefully hit this in the center. When you set this on you want to make sure it's level and hasn't shifted. If you think it's shifted, take the seal back out then again set it in there and feel that shoulder. Make sure you're on it evenly. Even though I installed this third generation Teflon seal facing the correct way. The problem is without the special ice cream cone shaped BMW seal tool, when you put the cover on, the center of the seal will get flipped around the wrong way. Teflon seal. And this is the problem. Pretend this is the inside of the engine. This is the thick solid part of the seal which has an arrow on it. This is the record grooves part. This is the actual Teflon right here. So it's like this. The tool is shaped just like this pen. It's got the cone part which is used to stretch the seal and break it in. Then it's got this part here where you slide the, the you, you take the seal and slide it here. Then you take a ring and an outer pipe and you use that to drive the seal on. So the tendency for the seal is to roll because it's like this. Now, what we have is this paper. Well, this is the seal when it's broken in, stretched into place. And what they want you to do is to put it on the front crank seal this way, but without letting the lips of it roll backwards. So it's very hard without the special tools. It's practically impossible to take this seal, slip it on like that, and don't forget, you've got to take and hammer the thing down and drive it. This is just a rough diagram of the seal and the seal driver tool. Here's another look at the crankshaft seal. Basically what we can see is my thumb is touching the black area where we'll see the, the arrow which shows the direction of rotation. The challenge here is to expand the Teflon part, the brown part, with the record grooves on it enough so it fits over the end of the crankshaft. If you don't stretch it enough, it's not going to go on or get damaged putting it on. If you stretch it too far, Remember it's, it's critical. Work. When you put the sealant on, it has to be round and smooth like putting toothpaste on a toothbrush. If not, and the thickness is uneven, it's going to end up putting uneven pressure. And when there's a lack of pressure, it will leak. So it needs to be pretty thick. It needs to skin up. And it needs to be applied just like they did at the factory where there is some excess that squeezes inside. Okay, over here I just took off the crank cover and taped it off because I forgot even how I did it when I changed it. I also noticed there was a little nick towards the bottom here where it hits on the case. I also noticed down here uh, a real mild sandpaper, either 300 or like a 600. And I taped the front part here with a wide piece of masking tape, did the rest in primer black. Then I pulled the tape off and did the whole thing in the clear coat. Off so that I still had to turn them several times. I turn them till they seat. And again, on an O-ring, you want to do sides evenly. You want to do the top a little, then the bottom, like that. There's a here. The wire actually wraps around. I referred to my digital photo, and it's uh, that's how it was. Relocating the fuel pressure regulator. And this is going to be located outside of the rail. What I found is I had to use a 19 millimeter on this nut, which was really tough. Then the unit drops down a little bit. That allows you to get access to the second screw. It's better to leave the first screw in, so uh, it just makes it easier when you're taking that nut off.
I removed uh, the barn. Next, unscrew the clamps at the bottom of the throttle bodies there, but remember to mark their location. They must go exactly the same way when you put them back on. Right here on the edge, there's a little lip which allows you to pry them off. The first and second throttle body mounts had a pretty good seal. The third one to the right was definitely leaking. Commend is if you have an older K, which is just about any K now, that uh, it's critical that you replace these rubber boots. One thing can lead to another as the fine oil mist from the leaking timing cover coats all the parts and loosens them up. Remember when you take these off, do not disassemble them any further. All the linkage needs to stay in place. Be gentle with them. A uh, good way to clean them is to use paint thinner or turpentine. It doesn't evaporate as quickly as carburetor cleaner. And then when you're done, follow up with carburetor cleaner. There was about two ounces of motor oil inside this plenum. That's why I recommend that you redirect the crankcase breather tube to a free air breather to avoid oil getting in here. Okay, remember you don't want to disassemble these parts any further. Here they're all cleaned up. On the left is the um, fuel shutoff or idle fuel shutoff below 2000 RPMs. You don't want to move or disturb that. Keep that all the screw tight and all that good stuff. This area is super filthy and it's a good idea why you want to pre-wash the bike. For more dirt in them, I saran wrapped them. I did the same with the plenum chamber. And on the top, there's a, a slot. Here's the water pump plug. Notice there's a little dielectric grease in the center. Those pop right out. Then you're going to spray a little bit of silicone in there and work it back and forth and pull your injector out. Each injector is made of metal, so they're pretty solid. Six O-rings, they're all the same. At the auto store, you can use a fuel injection plug puller to help get those out. And again, getting them out, I take each clip off. I'm able to just pull it off with my glove. And then I'm going to do them one at a time so you don't mix stuff up. And then, you know, I pull a little bit out, you know, rotate it spray a little silicone, push it back in, and then you these clips, see the open part? The closed part is going to face to the back here, and the reason for that is so that it's impossible for the clip to come off. This is again facing outwards. Your clips are all going to be on the inside, and I'm not... Okay, here's a little shortcut. You can pull the clip up, yank the plug off, but let the clip back down in place. Later, you can just take the plug and force it down and it will just click and lock into place. You don't actually need to take the clip off. Sprayed a little brake cleaner on a Q-tip. I went around here, the bore here, and here. Okay, I removed all the O-rings and cleaned these really thoroughly. I put a little silicone or you could use a little grease on the O-ring to make it easier to slip on. Some of the O-rings are really tough to get on. I also applied a little bit of dielectric grease on the contacts and I took that small screwdriver and scraped the contact gently on both sides on each one to make sure it had some fresh metal. As I applied a little bit of grease to each o-ring and I'm going to make sure my three clips are facing the right way. I've got a clip on each plug. I've dielectric greased each uh, connector and now I'm ready to put this thing in. Again, the oil-based primer I brushed on so far has taken a little over six hours to dry. Tape all the little plug, plug clips and if you have an o-ring stuff it in the barrel like that it's easy to lose them. I'm going to apply grease to these ends. That's what my friend did before. And that will help uh, reduce the corrosion that occurs. Because when I put it in the slot, in this part, it kept popping out. But what I found is I put a tiny bit of silicone on it, worked a little around with my fingers. Then when I pushed down on here, I could feel the seal go into the slot. This is a big job. You're disassembling a lot of stuff at the same time. It's really important to tape washers and things where they go and maybe put a note on them. Otherwise, it's impossible to put everything back the way it's supposed to go. And if you jiggle the map sensor, that's the noise you'll hear. You'll hear something moving. Clean the map sensor out, but be very careful. The door seems to uh, move a little more smoothly. What had happened is that oil mist from the blow-by had uh, worked its way all the way back into here and it coated this thing so warning I'm about to reveal a deep secret you see that slot in there that little notch okay that is going to align 
with this on the boot. See how there's a little arrow pointing there? So you can see both from the inside and outside. 